So if you guys have watched the previous two episodes, you should now know the underlying theory of simple linear regression and how we use gradient descent to find our optimal parameters to determine our regression line. So now we're gonna get hands on and implement simple linear regression in Python, which will be our first little project in this series. So without further ado, let's begin. So before getting started with implementing linear regression in Python, I'd advise you guys to download a program called Anaconda, which contains all the useful softwares used by data scientists all over the world. To do this, head to anaconda.com, on products, individual edition, and you can download Anaconda from here. Once Anaconda is downloaded, we can then launch Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook allows us to run Python 3 code on our browser and enables us to run and view the code on our browser. So right now we're in the Jupyter Notebook homepage where we can create all of our notebooks. To do so, go on new, Python 3 notebook. We can then rename the notebook to simple linear regression. So before getting started with implementing linear regression in Python, we need to download our data. I've provided a link in the description which you guys can go on now. So clicking on the link should take you to the following page where we can download our weather data. To do so, just go on code and download zip. Once this is downloaded, just open it, open it and locate weather data. We're then going to copy this data into our working directory. So put it into volume D perhaps. And I advise you guys to place our weather data.csv in, in a new folder and call it project data and paste our data in here. So now we're ready to import this data into our Python notebook. So the first step of any data science project is to import our libraries. In this case, we're going to be using pandas. And this is essentially a library that contains all useful functions used for data manipulation. We're then going to be importing matplot lib and this is going to be used for plotting our data and lastly numpy which is used for ca carrying out more complex mathematical operations so here we've imported each library by using the function import and the name of the library and then we get we then we gave a shortcut name to the library here it's pd so we, we renamed pandas as pd at plot library dot pi plot as pt numpy as np so each time we want to call a function from the library, instead of calling pandas, we can just use the word pd or plt. So the first thing we need to do is import our data. We do that by assigning our data a variable name. So it'd be appropriate to call it weather data. And then we use a function from the pandas library, which is pd.read csv. Now we need to find where our data is located and copy the file path. We can do that by going, going to File Explorer and finding our data and then copying the file path and then adding the name of our CSV file, which was weather data.csv. Next, let's take a look at our data by printing out the variable weather data. So if we run this code, we can now see all the temperature and humidity values of our weather data.csv. So to see if linear regression is suitable to be applied to this data set, we need to plot our data. We do that by using the following code. We set x equal to all the temperature values by doing x equals weather data. And then in square brackets, the name of our column, which is temperature. So you make sure this name here exactly corresponds to the name of the column. We do the same for y. So weather data and humidity. We're then going to use a function from our matplotlibrary.pyplot to plot our data. And we do plt.scatter x comma y. We should then add some labels to our graph by doing plt.x label call this temperature in degrees centigrade and we can add a label to the y-axis by doing plt.y label and humidity. So now if we run this code you can see a scatter plot of our of our humidity against temperature and we can see that follows a roughly linear relationship so linear regression is suitable to apply here so now it's time to actually implement our linear regression model onto our data instead of going through all the maths to calculate our linear regression line we can import a model from scikit-learn and to do that we use the following code we do from scikit-learn linear model import linear regression so this linear regression function from the scikit-learn library will enable us to calculate our linear regression line in just one line of code. 
So as before, we need to set our variable names. So what we're going to be inputting into our model. So in this case, we're going to be inputting temperature and we want to find a value and we want to be predicting a value for humidity. So we're going to set X to temperature. So we can just copy and paste the code from above and we'll set Y to humidity. Next, let's next let's give a variable name to our linear regression model and we'll just call it LR underscore model. And we'll set that to our linear regression model. And now we need to fit our model to the data. We do that by doing LR model dot fit x comma y. So here we're essentially calculating our regression line of y hat equals theta zero plus theta one x. And finally, let's display all of the predicted values for this for our temperature based on based on our regression line. We do that by giving a variable name to y hat. In this in this case, we can call it y underscore predict. And now we're going to be applying our regression line calculated from fitting our model to the data on all the x values. We're going to be doing y underscore predict equals lr underscore model dot predict x. And lastly, let's print all of the predicted values on our notebook. So if you run this code, and the reason why is because our x values here are actually a 1D array, which is essentially a list of numbers like you can see here. And our model does not accept this format of input data. We need to reshape it from a 1D array into a 2D array that looks something like this in the idea that each of our temperature values will have a location on the array. So this, you can imagine a zero here, and this location here will be zero, 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 one, zero, two, zero, three, and so on and so forth. So we need to convert it into a 2D array. And we do that by finding where we set our X variable and doing dot values reshape we reshape it to minus one one which essentially converts our x data from a one do array from a one dimensional list like this into a 2d array which looks something like box here and now if you run our data and now if you run our code we see we have all the predicted values all of our temperature values here now let's plot our regression line onto our scatter graph in order to do so let's copy the code from above which we use for plotting our scatter points of all of the data. And now let's add our regression line calculated by our linear regression model. And we do that by doing plt.plot x comma y predict. So here essentially we're applying our linear regression model to all the temperature values, not just the uh, not just these temperature values, but all of the ones shown on our graph. Essentially plotting our linear regression line of y hat equals d to zero plus d to one x. We run this code we get a graph that looks like this, where we can see our linear regression line such that it minimizes the mean squared error points. So if you want to find our values of theta zero and theta one using this linear regression line, you can do that with the following code. We can set the variable name theta zero to lrmodel.intercept and theta one will be our lrmodel.coefficient. So if you guys think of the equation of a line, it's y equals a plus bx. So theta zero is essentially our intercept or a, and theta one is our coefficient or gradient, which is b. And we're essentially extracting these values from our linear regression line. And lastly, let's print these values onto our notebook by just simply calling the variable names theta zero and theta one. If we run this code, we see, get, we see we get a value of theta zero is 1.13 and theta one as minus 0 0.035. And hence we have the, the linear regression line y hat equals 1.13 minus 0 0.05 eggs, which represents this line here. So the reason why we calculated this linear regression line in the first place is to make reasonable humidity predictions given any temperature value. So let's say we want to predict a humidity value for a temperature of say 32 degrees. How will we do that? Like before, we, we create a variable name for our predicted humidity. So y underscore predict. And we call our model, so our model, and we predict. And lastly, we'll display this value on our notebook. We run this code, we see we get an error. And the reason why is because, like before, when we had when we had to reshape our our x variable because initially it was a one-dimensional array and we had to turn it into a two D array. Same thing applies here, but here thirty-two is what we call a scalar, so just a single number. And we want to convert that into a two D array. And we do that from calling a function from our NumPy library. We do mp.array32 
Um, we're going to reshape it to 1, 1. And if we run this code now, we see we get a predicted humidity value of 0 0.006, which, which looking at our graph makes sense. If you imagine a temperature of 32 degrees, it'll be, like, it'll be quite far up to the right. We can imagine that being a very small humidity value if this line was to continue. So there you have it. You have implemented simple linear regression in Python. And for any data set you guys now get, where you have two variables, so in our case it was temperature and humidity, but it could be anything else, looking at height and weight perhaps, or perhaps looking at the height of plants and the amount of water that they get, or anything which once you've plotted the data you feel like follows a linear relationship, you can now capture this relationship easily using simple linear regression. In the next episode, I plan to go over linear regression where we have multiple variables, and also we're gonna start looking at nonlinear regression to capture more complex relationships.